In GIST, this is a disease that is really quite addicted to the mutant kinase pathway. In most GIST, 8 out of 10, 9 out of 10 almost, it's the KIT kinase signaling pathway. KIT is a receptor tyrosine kinase. In GISTs, most of them are mutated at different points in the enzyme, and that just turns the enzyme on. It locks it in the on position. Gleevec goes in, shuts it off, but over time, the enzyme mutates, probably pre-existing clones that grow out. And what happens is the new resistant clone doesn't bind Gleevec, or Gleevec fails to inhibit the mutation that's in the new resistant version of the KIT kinase. That's where sunitinib comes in. Sunitinib is shaped differently than Gleevec, and it can fit into corners of the enzyme to shut it off where Gleevec cannot fit. And, and regorafenib similarly is shaped differently than either of those two drugs, and actually has very different binding kinetics. It binds in a very different way to the KIT kinase, and we feel that's part of the reason why it works, even after Gleevec and Sutent have failed. It may also have something to do with the fact that regorafenib has a different profile of other enzymes it shuts down. It shuts down, for example, some of the fibroblast growth factor receptors, or FGFR. So it may be that the FGFR pathway is uh, working with KIT in some way to cause resistance and to keep the resistant GIST cells alive. So we're still working on all the reasons why this drug works when sunitinib doesn't work and when Gleevec has already stopped working. And that's a science project that's going on with our correlative study. For now, what I think practicing physicians need to know is that it does have a very unique activity. And uh, we feel that this phase three study really justifies its use in patients who have no other therapeutic options.